Hello and welcome to this special. Uh, my guest today is Mr. Dilip Gaur, Managing Director and CEO of Grasim, and Mr. Sushil Agarwal, CFO of Grasim. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on Bloomberg Quint. Uh, to begin with your earnings, uh, it's, it's been a very good quarter for you. Uh, but the consolidation of ABNL uh, plans or entities will come, was effective from July 1st. Uh, in that sense, how big will be uh, you know what kind of addition will uh, it will br um, bring into Grasim once that, especially in Q2 when it happens. So I think uh, uh, so far Nuvo is concerned. Uh, the the merger actually got impact uh, affected from July 1st, and the demerger of financial services uh, took place on 4th of uh, July, and 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 there is an additional piece of listing of uh, uh, Black Capital, the financial mm. services business, which is which is which is taking place. Uh, it will have its own uh, regulatory uh, approval uh, framework, which should happen in next uh, uh, three, four, five, six weeks time frame. And uh, during this uh, quarter, we should be able to get uh, Adipula Capital uh, listed. Second piece is uh, of Adipula Nuvo uh, standalone businesses, which is becoming part of uh, uh, Grasim uh, going forward uh, on annualized basis. Uh, roughly around uh, 5,000 odd crores revenue which will get added. So far standalone businesses are concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, roughly around uh, 600 odd crores uh, uh, annualized EBITDA would get added into the into the overall company's uh, uh, EBITDA. Mr. Kaur, uh, you know, I want to speak to you about the VSO business. Internationally, uh, prices were a little weak, but they have come back, I understand. Uh, what is the kind of outlook you see for VSF? See, the prices were weak relative to the earlier quarter, but why or why the prices have gone up? So fundamentally, I think we see a stable outlook for the VSF prices. Fundamentally, because the new capacity which is coming on stream is lower than the the demand growth. Mm -hmm. So there's always be a, a good balance of supply demand. As we speak, uh, the inventory of the VSF in the in the globe, Chinese market is only six and a half days. It is normally 10 to 12 days. So a lower inventory means the pipeline is stretched. So mm. I think the prices should remain stable as we go. Uh, and you see firm prices happening in Indian market as well because of yeah, that. The Indian market has to follow the, the global market. You can't be an island by itself. But mm. we make sure that Indian market doesn't have the volatility. Mm. What we make sure is we don't, we, we kind of protect Indian market from the global volatility to the extent of the swings. But ultimately the long term trend has to follow the global trend. Mm -hmm. Mr. Agarwal, uh, on the gross debt basis, what is the total debt which will be there on Grasim books uh, on a consolidated basis? So first let me break this uh, question into two pieces. One, as of June uh, 17, uh, Grasim on a standalone basis have a net uh, cash on the, on the balance sheet. So we have roughly around uh, uh, 2,900 crores uh, a surplus invested in, uh, into into or is a treasury uh, mm. book which we have and roughly around uh, 600 odd crores uh, loan which we have. So we, we have a surplus cash on the balance sheet. Post Nuvo getting merged effective uh, July 1st, mm. uh, there would be around 2000 odd crores uh, uh, debt which will which will come along with the merger. Mm. But still on a standalone basis we would continue to kind of remain a net, net, net cash surplus positive. Yeah, cash positive uh, company. And, and, and on console basis, uh, even uh, ultra tech where, where there is a large debt, I think will still remain the balance sheet look very healthy on a consolidated basis also and net debt to bid out would be around uh, 1.2 or, uh, or somewhere in that uh, uh, region. So it's, it's st still very, very healthy uh, balance sheet. So we have a healthy uh, cash flow generation and we have a strong balance sheet uh, of, of the Grasim both at a standalone level as well as uh, at a console level. On the consolidated basis, what is the kind of debt that Ultratech brings on the Grasim balance sheet? So, uh, as I said, broadly at a Grasim standalone level is uh, all net, uh, cash. net cash. cash. So, broadly around 11,000 uh, odd crores post the JP acquisition uh, debt which has got uh, added to the Ultratech balance sheet would be the, would be the uh, loan on the on the grass and, and that that has been refinanced to lower rates uh, of course so that, that, that's a process which is which is currently when do you uh, expect that to happen because on a consolidated basis you will have a higher interest go which would be there right so it will all depend on, on the kind of loan which we are referring so there's a uh, exercise which companies uh, currently undertaking and by when do you expect that happen in a quarter or two I don't want to I think because it will all specific debt has to be seen in a specific uh, context on a lever front 
uh, you've been very aggressive on Leva expansion. Uh, 1800 stores is where Leva is available. Give an idea of what exactly is the game plan for Leva. So Leva is a very pioneering effort we have done because the, I'll give you the genesis. Uh, the VSF market was not growing for almost six, seven years post 2007-8. And we believe that we had to grow the market as a, as, a, as a leader. I think so we first time got into the ingredient branding which is, which is something very unique to this mm. industry. Mm. And what we are trying to do is, because Indian uh, uh, textile value chain is a very fragmented value chain. So we have tried to put together the entire value chain, integrated them through our Leva accredited par partnership forum. And what we are trying to create is <coughs> build world class capability in this value chain to deliver best quality uh, garments and fibers using the Leva fabric. Mm. And I think that has done wonders. And last three years, the, the, the VSF market has grown double digit when the textile industry has grown by 4 to 5 percent. And that's so primarily because of Leva. We are Leva. And then and we started with, as you rightly said, we started with a very modest beginning with very few stores. Today we are in 3,000 stores and 200 cities. Okay. And almost 1.25 crore garments are tagged by Leva. Okay. So I think that is the kind of reach and depth we have got. And I think there is a huge consumer preference. Now people are coming into store and asking for Leva by choice. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what gives us confidence for this industry going forward. We are, in, in, we are thinking of investing into expansions also because the, the market growth is very good. You know, that's a, a, a segment which has to be expanded because I think you are currently in uh, women's wear and uh, you going forward you will move on to men's and kids wear which is there. What is the kind of investment you look uh, for that brand? See, the, the investment depends upon what, what you are So earlier it was about creating awareness. Mm. So we, 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 we were in metro city based, now we have gone into more cities, so now we are into television. So last year we have gone on to the television in a big way. So I think the, the investment will grow as the, as the brand, brands reach hmm. into there and going forward we will take Levi internationally also. So I can't put a number but the number will depend upon what my, my marketing plans are kind of. Mm -hmm. You know, in, I, what I, why I was asking you is that it was more of a com uh, commodity play which you took it to the end uh, consumer. Uh, mile, uh, last mile to consumer and uh, that's an interesting way of you know uh, extending your brand at a time when uh, the market was you know stagnant for a couple of years. Uh, so I was think uh, asking from a point of view of you know it's it's basically a consumer play of Grassim in in that segment and so is there any uh, investment you have your mark for such uh, See, You are rightly said we are moving from a B2B business to a B2B to C business. Yes. And if you look at our, our our spend, the spends have been quite substantial in the, in, in, in the marketing side of it. But not so only far, how much we have invested? About, about sixty to seventy crores is what we invest in the in the in the branding and the promotion part of it also. But that's not the only cost. Hmm. We have opened now design studios. We have opened one in in Noida, and we have one opening in New York, hmm. where we are trying to give our value chain partners with their small people, small mm -hmm. who, who cannot afford that. So we are giving them a window to the world. So they display the innovations in our studios. And we make them meet the global buyers and and so what we are trying to do is create an integrated value chain where, it, where there is a fragmented value chain. And you are positioning as an alternative to cotton as well, so uh, that's See, what I understand. What we are saying is that uh, VSF by itself is a great fabric, you should design, you can design best clothes, there is no need to blend VSF. So we are focusing on VSF as a fabric by itself, otherwise mm -hmm. people think of cotton, polished and woolen as a fabric. Now I think the designers are thinking of Viscose is a separate fabric. There are people who are designing dresses and clothes based on BSF. That's mm -hmm. the idea. You know, uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, your uh, new capacity has also come on stream in Gujarat. Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, top line will it bring in uh, once it's fully uh, operational? I think it, it started off uh, operation. So, how much of EBITDA would that come in? Because the cost is 20% lower for conversion there. At the same time, you have economies of scale which is coming. So let me first tell you uh, that both in the business of viscose and the chemical business, we, we are expanding capacities. And, and there are expansion on fresh investment and de-bottlenecking uh, of the existing uh, facilities. Mm. So, so both uh, de-bottlenecking like in viscose, we have a roughly around 160 tons per day is the de-bottleneck which is, which is taking place. That de-bottlenecking actually is, comes with a very, very small investment, mm. say broadly around 125 crores. Uh, although the, some part of de bottleneck actually does not have any any cost attached to that, and some de bottleneck does come with uh, with a small small cost around. And then we are also talking of a 
uh, fresh investments in in viscous capacities of around uh, 680 crores and uh, and and and, and that, that's that's uh, that's most likely will will take place at uh, vilayat one of our gujarat location the new plant which is already yeah so it's a phase 2 for that yes kind of and spread over how how many years that would be so typically you know uh, one line t- uh, takes uh, 24 months kind of uh, timeline uh, before it's, uh, start producing so that's that's broadly on uh, viscose the same way uh, we also have a debottlenecking plus the fresh, fresh ca- capacities coming in chemical part of the business mm. and uh, we again at this vilayat there is a brownfield uh, exp- uh, expansion already going on which will come in the uh, on the in, in the uh, production by end of fourth quarter of this financial year oh, okay and that will increase the capacity by how much so currently actually in chemical business we have 840 uh, ktpa uh, capacity yeah. Uh, post this uh, 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 the capacity come into the stream will go up to 1140 ktpa okay actually there are three components uh, uh, of There's this some uh, ebnl th- yeah, is exactly. also coming so in, there, right? are, there are three components one is this expansion uh, ebnl capacity will also get added and there are debottlenecking which is taking place and what about the existing plants because those plants have a lower conversion rate so are you looking at uh, in modernizing those plants as well yes that's right and is that, is that part of the debottlenecking or is it going to be separate uh, capex for that? So existing facilities of Grasim is, is all part of uh, debottlenecking. Uh, coming to the caustic soda business, uh, chlorine, uh, one of the components is high, high in supply, so uh, prices have fallen. Uh, how, how do you see that business going forward? Yeah, I think uh, chlorine is a big challenge for the business because the caustic market is very, very positive and good right now. And we, we have got what we call a value added product business and which has grown by 12%. So we are working more and more chlorine derivatives. So mm. we want to convert our chlorine rather than selling it as chlorine, convert it, add value and sell it. Mm. And we are, have a lot of projects based on that. So as we go along, our focus is on converting more and more chlorine into value added products and thereby making sure that you don't have to, it doesn't become a drain on the caustic soda business. And prices for caustic soda have been firm internationally. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and likely to stay firm. And they will uh, stay firm for the full full year? I mean, difficult to predict, but I think the supply demand is a very healthy situation. There is no global capacity coming globally. I was hearing that there is some supply demand imbalance which Within may come India, in. some capacity has come, so there will be some re-equilibration will happen. But mm. globally, there is a shortage of capacity, so so I think it should remain healthy. There will be some adjustment, but... Another uh, thing was your the entire restructuring which is happening and as a result of which you have AVNL coming into the fold and uh, Aritabilla Capital going out and you mentioned briefly uh, about uh, when what is the listing plan for the uh, ABCL uh, Aritabilla Capital Limited. Uh, we saw earlier uh, a month back that there was a demerger that happened, affected got affected on the stock exchanges. Uh, but when when do you expect ABCL to actually list? Because that's the question which every investor is asking. Uh, how, is there a timeline? Where are we uh, in the entire process of listing of ABCL? So I think, uh, as I said, demerger of uh, of ABCL financial services business has taken place uh, effective fourth July. Yes. And uh, then the, the there is a process of ABC uh, listing uh, where you know first the shares of Adipula Capital needs to be issued to the shareholders of Grasim. Mm. So that that action has been already taken. Actually, this this got done today, mm. and uh, the, then there is a uh, regulatory approval process which which we have initiated, which means we need to take approval of stock exchange to SEBI, mm. and and that process we have already initiated. So hopefully during this quarter uh, the listing will 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 come through. Would be. Uh, August end or uh, normally what time what is the time so when dip- they because it's being a new company yeah uh, I would imagine that around six weeks uh, is broadly what we think Mid- of. September is the right that, that, uh, way to look at it yeah Mid- September or end September that, is that, when that's what you the right see. Yeah, right. Uh, I'll end with one question which I uh, on the ideas thing uh, will idea have any impact on your balance sheet uh, the merge merge entity so we, as a, as a Grasim, owns uh, uh, post uh, merger of Nuvo, 28% in the in the in the idea, yeah. and uh, to that extent, uh, the the profitability uh, would get consolidated at a at a at, a, uh, at the company's consolidated uh, uh, numbers, mm. 
and uh, what about the debt part of it because that will also be no it, it, that will remain on the on the on the balance sheet of uh, idea mm. and uh, since we only have a 28% ownership in that company the the bottom line uh, would get consolidated at, at, to the proportionate level uh, under india yeah so there won't be a consolidated uh, thing which will be there. so in that sense it will be delinked in that way and that takes off a major concern for many of the investors of grassim right sure Mr. Gaur and Mr. Agarwal, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.